in this video we will get some more insights on quadratic equations okay so this is the second uh, this is the second video on quadratic equations and i have already talked about um some features that are present in the uh, solutions of the quadratic equations okay i assume that you are already familiar with quadratic equations and i just showed you some of the features now in this video i will tell you why the method of factorization works okay you know that you can solve the quadratic equation by completing squares and also by the method of factorization and we will see why that method of factorization works okay why it's always possible to uh, to factorize the equation such that it has two linear factors from which you can read off the solutions so that's the goal the most general quadratic equation is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 where a is not equal to 0 because if the constant a is equal to 0 then this term is gone and you have only this piece left which means you have a linear equation but we are considering quadratic equation so a should not be zero okay i will use the fact that the sum of the solutions so let's call x1 and x2 as the solutions which means if you put x1 here then it satisfies the equation and if you put x2 in this equation that also satisfies meaning a x1 square plus b x1 plus c would will be zero and a x2 square plus b x plus c that will also be equal to zero and because the equation is quadratic you will have two solutions okay in general two solutions maybe the solutions are repeated meaning both x1 and x2 are same and it's also possible that you do not have real solutions okay but you might have complex solutions so you can easily check that x1 plus x2 meaning the sum of solutions is equal to minus b over a okay and if you take the product x1 times x2 then is it, then that is equal to c over a okay and that you can easily verify by looking at the solution so you know the general solution is okay so one solution is x1 when you take a plus sign another solution is x2 when you take the negative sign okay then you can check that if you make the sum then it will give you minus b over a if you make the product it gives you c over a okay so now what i do is i take this this property and put it in here okay so what is x1 plus uh, what is b b is minus a times x1 plus x2 from this relation okay i'll put it in there so i get a x square minus a times x1 plus x2 x plus c is equal to 0 okay i have just substituted this this relation okay now let's define or maybe here so let me define minus a times x1 as beta and minus a times x2 as gamma okay these are the definitions now with these definitions i have a x square plus beta plus gamma times x okay so beta plus gamma times x plus c equal to 0 okay that's what we have and i haven't made any mistake so far 
Okay. Also, now we will use uh, this relation. That the product of the two solutions is C over A. Okay. So let's plug it. Uh, plug these definitions here. So you get A times. So I am taking A to the left. A times x1. But what is x1? X1 is minus beta over A. And what is x2? That is minus gamma over A. And this is C. So C is equal to beta gamma over A. Okay. So I'll substitute that thing here, which gives me A x square plus beta plus gamma x plus beta gamma over A is equal to zero. Okay. So that is all good so far. Now I can just uh, write it as sum of two terms, beta x plus gamma x, and take the first one uh, and first one and the second one and take x common. Okay. So if you take x common, you get a x plus beta. Okay. Then the second term is gamma x. Now we will take gamma common from this term and this last term. That will give you gamma. Okay, um, x plus beta over a. Okay. Now let me carry this to the next page. Um, let's see. Maybe I'll write it again. So what we have on the previous page is x times ax plus beta plus gamma times x plus beta over a. This is equal to zero. Okay. Now if I pull out a factor of a here, I will get ax x plus beta over a plus gamma x plus beta over a and that is equal to zero okay so you see that x plus beta over a is common so i'll take that factor common and then it will leave us with ax plus gamma so ax plus gamma and x plus beta over a okay so you see that um I have been able to put it in form of factors, the quadratic equation, okay, where the property beta and gamma satisfy is the following. You see here, this thing is beta times gamma is AC, okay. So here, um, look at this, the B, the B term here, the uh, term proportional to x, that coefficient b, that b has been written as beta plus gamma. What is the property that beta plus gamma is satisfying? It is that beta times gamma is ac. Okay, That's the rule you have learned that you should s split b into two terms, into two pieces such that the product of those two pieces is a times c. Okay, And you see uh, now that Using that, we have been able to arrive at the factorized form. Okay, So you now see that it is always possible to start with the quadratic equation of this form and then split B into two such pieces such that their product will be A times C. Okay, And it is really happening because of these properties that the solutions satisfy, okay? which, we, which we already know from completing the square in the in the most general case okay so that's the that's the uh, that's the explanation of why method of factorization works okay now you see if you multiply these it generates a term ax square okay that's and then of course you have to use the definitions of beta and gamma to go back to um, a b and c coefficients now this is all good now if 
you don't find this very beautiful this expression we can make it um, slightly nicer by dividing by a because this uh, this entire equation i can divide by a and the division i will do in this factor so it becomes x plus gamma over a times x plus beta over a is equal to 0 okay it's the same equation multiplying by some constant doesn't matter but when you multiply here it gives you x square it does not give you a x square but you can multiply the entire equation by a and you get back the original one okay so you can put it in this form as well so i hope um, this explains clearly why this method of factorization always works okay we'll meet in some other video with some other insight